Hello, how are you all today? Hope everybody is okay. My name is Guy Incognito. Yes, hello. Unfortunately, Mark can't be here at the moment, but um, um, ah, <sighs> uh, bugger, ah, uh, foiled. Um, yes, no, it is me. Hello, everybody out there. Um, I thought I would be able to get away with not, you know, obviously not. Um, I shall stick it where it's been most of the night, in fact. There you go. Steampunk Iron Man. Um, uh, yeah, people are going to see this later on and think, what the hell? Don't worry about it. Um, yes, hello. How is everybody? You all doing all right? Everybody out there okay? Yeah? Fantastic. Um, <clears throat> this is... Um, it is about 18 minutes to 2 in the morning over here in the UK. Uh, I've just been to uh, a couple of friends. They, they had a, a joint 40th and 50th birthday party. Hello out there. Hello. Fantastic party. Thank you very much. Happy birthday to you both, Catherine and Susan. Hello. Thank you. Um, I hope you don't mind me saying that live on there and or on YouTube. So, um, yes. So, I've had a few to drink. Yeah, as as is normal on these live hangouts, I'm sure. And I'm still drinking. So, that's the tip of the day. Badger's thirsty ferret. Very nice. Uh, as as with all these <clears throat> all these live um podcast live. Google Plus Hangout things that I do on my own here. Uh, I have been to my local comic book shop in Southampton, Forbidden Planet in Southampton. Great bunch of guys. And I have picked up my monthly supply of comics. Uh, here they are. Uh, I, shall, I shall take them out of the bag to show you all. That's what I've picked up today. I'll get through that. I'll get to them later. <sighs> Stay. Um, yes. So anyway, as with all these, I'll show you what I've picked up recently. Uh, not everything I've picked up recently, because there's a couple of things I forgot to bring actually to this table. <laughs> but um, I'll show you some bits and pieces I've picked up uh, from the little village shop that I go to. Uh, I've got my 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 2000 AD uh, fix, and this is 2000 AD number 183, and that's Judge Anderson or Cadet Anderson, as she's known in these these stories now. 2000 AD, the best galaxy's greatest comic, in fact. And we have got 18834 18, of 2000 AD there. There you go. Brilliant. Uh, you alright Kirby? Yep. If you hear any coughing or banging and crashing or anything like that, it's the rats and Kirby the ferret that are mucking about. It's, it's their time to be awake and I should be asleep now. So, that's right. uh, <clears throat> What else we got here? We have got the DC chess collection. This is number 36 and it's Pocket Man, Pouch Man. Sorry. Deathstroke. Uh, I'm. I I tried to do a video on issue thirty four and thirty five of this. Or was it thirty thirty five? No, thirty five, which is Wonder Woman, and I ended up deleting it because it was just too derogatory against DC Comics. Um, not that I give a monkey's whether I sound derogatory or not against DC Comics, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I am gonna cancel this. The next one is Supergirl in the new uniform. I will probably get that because it's you know it's gonna be coming out before I get to the the shop that I get these from. But after that, I'm gonna cancel it. I really can't see any character that's here. Uh, who that is. Well, I'll, sh I'll show you who the who the um, the black chess pieces are. Uh, you've also got Dark Side there. Who's that? The Joker. Um, one of the Red Lanterns. I can't remember his name. Lex Luthor is the white, the black, black King. That's 
Cheetah as the white as the, as the Black Queen. Professor Zoom, I think that's supposed to be Zod, General Zod there, I think. And you've got Doomsday there and some I think that's possibly meant to be Brainiac, I think. I don't know. Then you've got Killer Frost there. Deathstroke, who's in this comic, Bizarro, which I might want to pick up. Um, you've got Manta, there who's Aquaman villain. Deadshot, a a Captain Cold, and oh, I can't remember his name. He's Aquaman villain. I can't remember his name, but yeah. And I'm really not interested. The only one of these I might be interested in picking up would be the Zatanna one because I, I like the character Zatanna and even in the New 52, they haven't managed to really screw her character up that much to warrant me to not I still like the character. So, But yeah, I think I'm going to be cancelling this after the next issue. Uh, one that uh, I'll show you the Deathstroke figurine as well whilst I'm here. And, and with with all these, I've said it before, I will be doing, uh, I've got next week off on holiday from work, so I will be doing a, uh, hopefully be doing a, a figurine video or two, just so I can pack all the figurines at the back there out, and, uh, and stick them away in my vault. Uh, so there you go, That's, that was the Deathstroke figurine, which I shall give them. A bit of a better view for you guys who are out there who want to watch it. Look at it a bit later on. <coughs> um, also in the collection that I've got is the Batman Automobilia. And this one is number 11, which is the Dark Knight movie Batpod. There you go. And I'll show you. This is actually quite a boring one. In comparison to other ones that I've, I've got from this, this is quite a boring one. And it's just it is literally the back pod that has been in a couple of the movies. So there you go. Yeah. It's okay, but it's not the best one I've seen from. Them. And this one, strangely enough, this one I'm really looking forward to. It's the Batmobile from Detective Comics number twenty-seven, the very first original Batmobile in issue twelve. And I'm really looking forward to that one. Even though it just looks like a normal stretched... Um, it wouldn't be a limousine, would it? Anybody out there who knows cars better than I do, which isn't that difficult, um, if you know what make car that is supposed to be, obviously it's going to be 1930s Americana sort of car. So, But that just looks brilliant even though it's not much to do with it doesn't look much to do with Batman <coughs> it is the very first Batmobile the very first car that Bruce Wayne drove around in as Batman in Detective Comics number 27 so I am looking forward to that one uh, and oh yes now then yes um, on a sec, let's just have a quick look is there any comments I don't even know if there's anybody actually watching this. Hopefully somebody will be watching this later on. Uh, but there doesn't seem to be any anybody watching just yet. But if anybody does decide they want to watch and they put a comment up, I will be including you in the video, in this podcast and that, just to, as a hello sort of thing. So anybody who wants to comment on this video, feel free to do so. No worries. Um, yes, now then, back to the news, the big news that has transpired over here just in the last few hours. Um, Matt Smith, the 11th Doctor, will be leaving Doctor Who at the end of this year. The Christmas special will be, well, from what I understand, the Christmas special will be Matt Smith's last Doctor Who. He will regenerate into the 12th Doctor. Wow. Well, Let's not be hasty here. Hopefully, you know, but I, I have I have noticed that there is actually a a Twitter campaign, yes, about um, a certain Englishman here who has been saying, oh, I could be a doc better Doctor Who, um, for quite some time. And there is actually a campaign on Twitter. 
it's not that big, and chances are it's not going to get that big at all. Um, but it has been bugging some, you know, well, egg right actually. I think I've bugged with once. <coughs> a couple of people have actually bugged him about that. But um, yes, so go on Twitter, and it's uh, I can't remember what it is now. It is um, it is hashtag M A W zero 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 one for doctor okay that's what you've got to put in and that's what you've got to harass everybody on on twitter and facebook and everywhere to get me to be the next doctor who ha somebody who has well the only acting experience i've ever had it was when when i went to a secondary school in this country and i'd done drama i don't think i was that bad i think i'd be proved actually as doctor who i think be but anyway, sorry, um, I digress. Yes, um, yes. The reason why I mentioned that was because um, the new issue of Doctor Who magazine has come out. There you go. And this one highlights the um, Peter Cushion Hammer movies, uh, Doctor Who. Uh, both of the films, actually, both of the Hammer movies that uh, Peter Cushion stars in as Doctor Who, and that's the uh, Doctor Who and the Daleks. And also the Dalek invasion of Earth 2156. I think it's 2156, yeah. And there you go. It's Peter Cushion as the Doctor. And I, I, I think in this one, he, he actually played a version of Doctor Who that was really portrayed by the first Doctor, William Hartnell. <clears throat> it's just that this was obviously the movie, the big budget movie version of, of Doctor Who, the colour version of Doctor Who. And, um, I mean, the, the movies themselves were really good. The, the the Hammer movies with Doctor Who were really good. They are really fun and interesting to watch. Uh, but they, they're not actually classed as proper Doctor Who canon. They are, sort of like, out of sequence to the rest of the real Doctor Who universe. Uh, I know Big Finish Productions who do all the audio plays, um, which I don't actually have anything here at to hand at the moment, but Big Finish Productions, they did uh, Doctor Who Unbound, where they had different actors playing the Doctor in different stories or similar stories to what they've already, you already know about. Uh, which were, which were really good actually they were really interesting to listen to and in this one you've also got a, a, a um an interview with Neil Gaiman about his uh his story his Cyberman story that was only aired a few nights ago uh, a few weeks ago with Nightmare in Silver which was a blinding story absolutely blinding story so yeah so Top Two magazine. That's number four six one. Hey, uh, right. <coughs> Quickly go through some normal, just some random pickups that I've had recently from from eBay. Really, um, we have got the bounce number one. Really fun comic. Uh, all about this guy who is a stoner from what we can tell and he was also a superhero it reminds me a bit about the it reminds me a bit about uh, like the the DC comics series that come out in the mm, mid 90s major bummer that series it sort of reminds me a bit like that where you've got this this um this stoner who everybody thinks, oh, you yeah, know, he doesn't really do anything, but he actually is a superhero, and and yes, Joe Casey and David uh, Menisa on artwork there, and this has been a fun, fun issue to read, actually, really, really looking forward to the rest of that one, really fun comic that, <coughs> and we have Daredevil, Daredevil number twenty six. This is the different cover. So this is the the cover B, the variant cover to this one. The other one was Daredevil running along uh, clothesline, which is a brilliant, 
brilliant cover. But this one, I picked this one up because I saw this was going for stupid money on eBay. This was going for about 12, 15 quid on eBay already on the day that it came out. And I found somewhere that was selling it for the proper price. So I thought, right, I'll pick that up. But this has been a brilliant series. Mark Wade's Daredevil has just been superb. Every issue has just made me want to pick up the next issue. So definitely worth picking up. Uh, love it or hate it. A lot of people are. I don't think there's that many people on the fence about this one. Uh, Superior Spider Man, this is number 10, and that's a brilliant cover. Absolutely gorgeous cover there. Very nice. Uh, I, personally, I've been enjoying this. Personally, I have been enjoying Superior Spider Man, but I just cannot wait for Peter Parker. Peter Parker to come back into his own body. It's just going to be such. I'm hoping that it's not going to be a. And then everybody woke up, and it was all a dream. I really hope it's not going to be that. Uh, I don't think it will be. I think Dan Slot has definitely got something planned to bring Peter Parker back into this. What it is, I don't know. I don't think anybody apart from Dan Slot knows. Uh, but yeah, I've been enjoying this personally. <coughs> And we have Young Avengers, number five. Another really good book from Marvel. <coughs> fantastic, fantastic artwork um, by uh, McKelvin, McKelvey and uh, Kieran Gillen. Is it Kieran Gillen? Sorry, it's Kieran Gillen. Who's doing the writing on this. Sure, it's Kieran Gillen. But yeah, absolutely fantastic comic. Young uh, Young Avengers, brilliant, loving it. <clears throat> really nice take on the uh, the young superheroes of Marvel, the Marvel universe. Oh, I cannot praise this comic enough. Uh, I I am loving this comic. It is possibly one of the best series out there at the moment, and it's the haunting of uh, blah 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 blah. The Haunting of Fabian Grey, and it's Five Ghosts. This is issue three. An absolutely blinding series. Loving everything about this. The artwork, the writing, it's just... Oh, it's fantastic. And it reminds me so much of the old, old, old horror and um, mystery comics. It's like the 70s and early 80s. <coughs> really good. Excuse me. Drink responsibly, kiddies. In a minute. I uh, I really need to get issue one of this because I read this one and it is so up my street. And it is so weird. Uh, Ted McKeever's new golden age sized comics that is coming out from Amish Comics. And this is issue two of Miniature Jesus. And this is just so weird, but so brilliant. Ted McKeever just suits this beautifully. Obviously, he's writing it, uh, but it is a brilliant comic. And the artwork inside, Ted McKeever's artwork inside is just gorgeous. It is such a weird comic. But I love it. I absolutely love it. It's fantastic. <clears throat> and... I must admit, the only reason why I picked this comic up was for the cover. Uh, I'm not quite sure who done the, actually done the artwork for this, but this is the final part of Hell on Earth War, and it's X Factor number two five six. And that cover is just gorgeous. You got um, M on the front there with the blood spiral in all the different characters from the, the comic on the front, on the floor behind her. And that, that pit, that cover is just beautiful. And from what I understand, Peter Day, I mean, I, I got, I've got the first few issues of this when it first got re-released uh, way, way, way back ages ago. And I've got, I've picked up a few issues since it got renumbered at issue 200, but I've not really kept up with this series. 
and I'm so sorry that I haven't. From what I understand, it's it's being cancelled soon as well, so it's, it'll be ending soon. I don't think this is the last issue. I think they're going up to issue 260 on this. But yeah, that's a gorgeous cover. Very beautifully drawn. And <laughs> uh, I had to get these. I saw these on eBay, and I was like, oh, man, I had to get them. I had to get them. Sorry. And <clears throat> one of the reasons why I picked them up was because there's two of them, and you really need to get two of these. <laughs> and I'll show you what it is. It's it's um, the Ren and Stimpy Show comic number one. There you go. I love Ren and Stimpy. I used to love watching this. I don't think there was. I don't think every single episode was shown in the UK. It might have been, but I didn't see them all. I don't think. But I loved Ren and Stimpy when it was on. I still do love Ren and Stimpy. Anything that's weird, it's just perfect for me. And um, it's like it says on it. Open the bag. Secret message on cover. Now, if you if you actually <clears throat> notice, you actually you can actually see there roughly what the secret message is that Ren is saying to Stimpy. But luckily enough, this is the unopened version, so this is completely sealed. This is the open version. And do you want to know what the secret message on the inside is? I shall I shall read it to you. <coughs> Excuse me. It says, um, You idiot! You open the bag! Now the comic's worthless! In my best Ren Hoich voice, obviously. There you go. Absolutely fantastic. And you know, you've also got, in both of them, you've got the... Um, this one's the, both of these have got the Stimpy Air Fowler, and I've actually I've actually scratched and sniffed this. I didn't think it was that bad. I think it must have lost some potency. I I did get the girlfriend to sniff this, and her nose nearly fell off. So I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with that. My nose doesn't seem to be too bad. I actually today I went to as as I said at the beginning of this video. I've I've been to somebody's birthday party, two people's birthday parties today. And um, the kids there decided they were going to make a, a non-alcoholic concoction. And just by sniffing the drink, I managed to tell them exactly what they'd stuck in the drink, which completely confused the heck out of them. Um, so my nose can't be that bad, really. Um, so, but yeah, um, yeah, I can't really, I can't really smell. Wrong end, sorry. No, can you smell? Have a sniff. Sniff it. Hang on, let me just. I'll just scratch it for you. Have a sniff. Sniff. Sniff it. Yeah. Can you smell anything? No. Exactly. It doesn't smell. It's weird. The smell must have worn off or something. I personally can't smell anything. But there you go. <clears throat> um, so yeah, that's that's all the stuff that I've picked up recently before today or yesterday. Right. <coughs> um. <coughs> now on to what I've picked up today. Uh, let's just have a quick look, see if we've got any comments in the comment section. I don't think there is. There's about three or four people watching this. Uh... So look. At the moment, no, at the moment, no, no comments at the moment. But uh, anybody, if you're watching this video, and uh, on the on the pre on, on the recorded one in YouTube, feel free to put any comments down, and I I shall see if I can answer any any comments for you. Uh, like I said, we've got three viewers at the moment. So, hi everybody, how are everybody doing? Hope you're all well. Um, Mustachio Iron Man says, it's good to weigh it comics. So, yes, what I've picked up today. Before I get to the comics, I'll just show all the little bits and pieces that I've also picked up recently. <coughs> uh, the obligatory previews with 
previous magazine, uh, you had Howler Mouse, Costa Bromstar, Captain Strange Life, and R. Dowdy do a video a couple of days ago, a live hangout video on Costa Bromstar's channel, and they they went through this issue of previews and said exactly what they were looking forward to. I I actually haven't had a chance to look through this properly, but I may, if anybody's interested, I may look through this and, and see about, yeah, I'll give you an idea of what's in there and what I'm interested in at least. So there you go. There's that. <coughs> uh, another piece collection that I'm getting is the, oh, sorry, no, a second, I've got it here. There you go, that's better. Uh, the no another piece of collection I'm getting is the Ultimate Graphic Novel Collection. And this is issue 37, Fantastic Four, Unthinkable. And that's issue 30 on the spine there. And you've got issue 38, which is Thor, The Last Viking. <clears throat> and this reprints the Mighty Thor... 337 to 34 343 three, I think it is that's number 5 I didn't tell you what this one was did I? this was Fantastic Four Volume 3 number 67 to 70 and Fantastic Four Volume 1 500 to 502 so that's what I know loving those <clears throat> if you're interested in these these books if you go to ghost critics channel and you'll see that he's got his brand new format of um, a show and he, he actually reviews these Marvel graphic novel collections he does it a million times better than I could do it and that's one of the reasons why I don't really review these I may do later on if I feel like it, but the if you want to see somebody review these really well, go to Gro Ghost yeah, go to Ghost Critics channel and see him review these. These are brilliant. He is absolutely fantastic. And as well as that, he's just come back off hiatus with a brand new sh format for his show. Fantastic guy. And if you go to Comic Uno's channel as well, there is a, a video she's put up for a whole um, the second comic book community um, voting sort of. Like, thing and it's best best British comic book reviewer vote for Ghost Critic if you do it now that'd be fantastic um, what else we got we got you remember the you remember the Green Lantern movie don't you yeah that one yeah. Um, we're in Toys R Us in the UK I don't know if it's all branches but in the one in Southampton they're actually selling the Green Lantern figurines for one ninety nine. And I went to Southampton today to Forbidden Planet. I went to Southampton with my butter one. And if you go to his channel, you'll see what he's picked up today. And this is what I picked up on in that's in uh, Toys R Us in Southampton. That's steel. And we were trying to figure out why this doesn't look anything like that. Which is the steel that appeared in the movie, and it's because this is actually a uh, early concept figurine for steel. So yeah, <clears throat> nice little, nice little Green Lantern ring in there as well, which I don't think is a one size fits all. No. Uh, stick one up there actually. In front of Renner Stimpy, Stimpy, you idiot! <clears throat> Okay, you're in. <laughs> um, yes, and this one here, sorry, this one is Kilowog. And uh, as uh, Adam, my butter one said, this is heavy. <coughs> so this is a very heavy one. And, oh, sorry, Kilowog? Yeah, Kilowog. So there you go. 199, it had to be done. There you go. Uh, so we're like, wow, we've jumped up to six viewers now. Hi, everybody. Let's have a look. So, any comments from you guys out there?
at the moment. No, nope, no comments yet, but that's fine. You're watching, so hey, everybody, if you want to make yourselves known, feel free to do so. Where are we? There we are. Hello, back again. All right. Um, where was I? Ah, yes, my butter one as well. Yeah, Adam. Uh, also in Toys R Us, I'm sure they're they're elsewhere in in the world. And that uh, you you everybody's heard of Kiss, the band Kiss. Yeah. And oh look, I said Kiss, and the the viewing figures were up by about two or three. Oh, excellent. Everybody loves Kiss. Huh? Um, and you've all heard of Hello Kitty. There's another person there. Hello, Kitty. <laughs> um, well, there there is now a Kiss meets Hello Kitty. Um, I believe they're called Danglies. And I was at the checkout waiting to pay for these, and out the corner of my eye, I saw the box with the Kiss Hello Kitty Danglies in it. So I just turned to my butter one and said, is that Kiss Hello Kitties over there? And he went, yeah, it is. And I went, pick us up a packet. Go on, just, just pick anyone and give us pass it here and I'll buy it. And I got it, and I all the way I was thinking, I hope I get the Gene Simmons one. I really do hope I get the Gene Simmons Hello Kitty one. Look what I got. The Gene Simmons Hello Kitty kiss figurine. Yeah. Ah. Brilliant. Uh, I mean, there's there's other there's other ones. There's eight to collect, and you've got four four of these, four four full figure body, four full figured body danglies. Um, I'll show you the little bit of paper that come in the packet. That's the little paper that come in the packet. So you've got you've got four heads, four heads. <laughs> you've got four heads there, and then you've got the four. Full body danglies there, which are brilliant. So eight to collect, and yeah, I got the Gene Simmons one. <laughs> ah, that's cool. Uh, now I need to somebody to pick up my idea of Halo Kitty, which is where you mix Hello Kitty with Halo. <laughs> I'm sure somebody's already done that. I don't know. I might have just. I, I, know, I thought I dreamt it up myself. But anybody who wants to pay me royalties for that, I'm quite happy to take the money. <laughs> so yeah, there you go. Howler Mouse. If you're interested, there is a Gene Simmons Hello Kitty kiss dangly. Uh, uh, right. One more thing before we get into the actual comics. My lo the guys at my local comic shop. I've written my name on the back of this. Oh. <coughs> are very gracious. Were very gracious to give me this poster um, when they finished advertising it, and I I really do love this poster. I love this poster more than I actually like the series, and it's the Age of Ultron poster. There you go from Marvel. I think this is the variant. The variant cover for issue one. One of the variant covers for issue one, anyway. So there you go, that's the full, the full poster for that. Um, like I said, it was free, so they, they would have only just chucked it away in any case. So I hate seeing things like this get chucked away. So I say, fine, if you don't want it, I'll have it. So um, yeah, brilliant, fantastic. Right. right. The comics, this is what you've all come to see. Me showing you what comics I've picked up today. Oh, it's a very dry night out. So look. Any comments? Um Cuss Crusader. Hi man, how's it going? Gambit eight nine six. All right man, how are you doing, mate? How's it going? And Comic Crack as well are here with us. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, Gambit 
896 I have to say I have seen your videos I know you sent me a message I've been really bad and not messaging you back I have seen your, your videos now for all your all your um your reviews and that for the trades and everything they are fantastic if you guys any guys who are watching this now if you haven't seen Gabba 896's channel go and see it because he does some blinding reviews on trades and that brilliant um so yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, right, there we go. Right, let's get on cracking on with the comics, shall we? This is what you've come to see. First up, and I had to pick this up because it has got soldiers, dinosaurs, and all the good stuff. This is the, I believe this is the retailer incentive actually. Now I've got this for the main cover. I've got this for normal cover price. <clears throat> this is the retailer incentive cover for half past danger number one from IDW. That's a gorgeous cover. As, as much as I liked the original, the main cover for this, I saw this on the shelf and I thought that is brilliant. Absolutely gorgeous cover. Uh, Doctor Monkeybot will be happy about this. <laughs> for one, uh, it's Mara number four, part four of the six issue mini series, and this has been really good as well. Uh, Brian Wood and Ming Doyle. Ming Doyle's artwork in this has been gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. I'll show you. There you go. That's some of the artwork inside by Ming Doyle. Really beautiful artwork in there. So yeah, I thought this was an ongoing, but it's not. It's actually a. It's only a mini series, six issue mini series. Uh, this one, I bought completely on a whim. Totally on a whim. I've never seen the program. Uh, I understand it's a bit like Adventure Time, which I've seen a few episodes of. Love to get some of the comics of Adventure Time. There seems to be loads of different, various different versions of Adventure Time. Right? I might have to see if I can uh, find some episodes of this on the internet somewhere. Uh, but this is the first issue from Kaboom. This is cover B for regular show. I have no idea who that character is on the front. I've heard people talk about this as saying how great it was, and if you like Adventure Time, you'll like regular show. So, first issue, I thought, oh, why not? I'll pick it up, see how it's going, see what it's like. And it does look right up my street. Completely weird, completely crazy artwork inside. And like I said, I have no idea what's going on in there. But there you go. <laughs> Oh, yes, now then. Um, at the beginning of this video, I mentioned that big news in the UK. Matt Smith, spoiler, just in case anybody hasn't heard yet, spoiler, right? Somebody's already gone. Oh, no, you're back now. No. Spoiler alert, okay? Matt Smith is leaving Doctor Who at the end of this year, okay? I don't know if he's going to be, uh, well, I'm saying by the end of the year, I would imagine he's, his last episode is going to be the Christmas special. <clears throat> now, as far as I know, they haven't mentioned anybody to take over from them yet. I would imagine that they've already got an actor lined up to play the role of the Doctor as the 12th Doctor in Doctor Who. But if you haven't, Stephen Moffat, if you haven't got an actor yet to play the part, there is somebody here who is a very, very big Doctor Who act, uh, Doctor Who fan. He knows the character inside and out. And well, it, see, multi multitasking actor here. Yeah, you, know, you, you you would hardly even realise that it was me here now. You know, hey, Luigi. See, put that back on Steampunk Iron Man. Um, so yeah, there is like I said before at the beginning of the video, there is a Twitter. Um, 
a Twitter thing going on was uh, hashtag M A W W O W O double zero double zero one for Doctor. It's worth a try. You never know. Uh, but anyway, back to the comics. Uh, you've got issue eight, issue eight or issue six. Oh, so issue 8 of Doctor Who magazine there you go if I remember correctly this actually does have the Vashti Narada in it Yeah, it's got the Vashti Narada in it, so <clears throat> they're back in this one. It's a pretty good going. And uh, just just to prove it, I've got my own um, sonic screwdriver. Okay, it's not a very good one, but. Be amazed what I can do with it. So, get me. Anyway, um, this this next comic, uh, Doctor Monkeybot reviewed this on the Excalibur Brits podcast a couple of weeks ago, and this was the one that that confused both him and myself because I thought when he said. <laughs> When he said this comic, I thought he meant Dream Merchant from Image Comics. No, he meant Dream Thief from Dark Horse Comics. And the oh, it is a really good uh, Jay Nitz and Greg Smallwood. <laughs> Smallwood, <laughs> sorry. Uh, <clears throat> and the the art styles in there really do contrast everything you'll get a point where the character the main characters go into a dream state and the artwork completely changes but it's all done by the same artist really really a beautiful comic beautifully written beautifully drawn comic it's a five issue mini series from dark horse uh what we've got here I think this is the last issue of this actually. As far as I know, this is the final issue of this mini series from Dynamite. Oh no, 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 there's one more issue, six issue mini series, and it's Jennifer Blood, First Blood. This is issue five. Yeah. And that's the only cover as well for that comic, which is strange for Dynamite because they they do like to pump out their variant covers and that. But that's the only cover for that issue, which is pretty good. Uh, this is a series that I'm really enjoying from Image Comics, as most series from Image Comics are really good. Um, and it's it's Nowhere Men number five. Yeah, uh, but Eric, Eric Stevenson, uh, Nate Balgarde, Jordi Belair, and Phonographics. I believe Phonographics do the um, do the coloring on this. But yeah, really nice series. Nowhere Men number five. In complete contrast. Uh, an image comic that I really am not getting to grips with. This this is a real clunker for me, and I I was hoping that I thought this was going to be a four issue mini series. Reading previews magazine, I found out that it's not. It's an ongoing series. Oh, excuse me, you you excuse me because I'm yawning at this. This is issue three of six. And I've always, I've always been on the understanding that if you say that something is better than sex, then you're not doing it right. While there's plenty of things better than sex, where this comes in consideration, obviously somebody's not doing something right here. Yeah. 
but yeah, that's issue, issue three. I will probably get the next couple of issues just to finish this story arc to see how it goes on. But if it doesn't pick up, and all it just seems to be is just sex scenes chucked into the comic for no reason other than the fact that the comic is called Sex. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll keep on getting it. Hopefully it'll pick up, but I don't think I'll be getting it any further than issue five, I imagine. <sighs> Again, in complete comparison, I have been waiting for this comic to come out since I first saw that it was going to be published by Black Mask Publications. Um, the first comic to come out from Black Mask came out a couple of weeks ago called 12 Ways to Die, which was written by the RZA, who is one of the guys from the Wu-Tang Clan, the, the big rap, rap group, Wu-Tang Clan. Unfortunately, I missed that one. Uh, from what I understand, it was an okay comic. Nothing really to write home about, but it was okay. But this was what I was waiting for. Oh. Occupy Comics, issue one of three. I haven't read this yet. I, I've literally, today, well, yesterday, I literally got back from the comic, got back from Southampton, sat down, had something to eat, and it was a case of getting ready to go out to birthday parties and that. So I haven't really had a chance to read this yet. But you have got the likes of Alan Moore, David Lloyd, Art Spiegelman, Molly Crabapple, Joshua Hell, Felikoff, Ben Temple Smith, Ronald Wimberley, J.M. D. Matisse, and Charlie Adler. And all profits will be donated to Occupy related initiatives. So uh, it's, it's an anthology title. Oh, I'm really looking forward to reading this. There are some great names attached to this comic. And that is... Well, excuse me, one of the next comics to come out from Black Mask, which is Liberator. Which I believe, if I remember correctly, Liberator is... Uh, a story about two characters that go around saving animals from abuse and it says only 30% of liberated profits will be donated to animal rescue for efforts which is pretty good uh, there's a blurb on here from Scott Snyder a cool progressive story about young outcast crusaders by Scott Snyder Batman Superman Unchained that's not really necessarily a good thing but <clears throat> So yeah, Black Mask seem to be pretty a pretty interesting comic book company, to say the least, to come out recently. Yeah. Okay. Any of these comics, if you're watching this either now or later on when it's up on YouTube, if you've got any comments to say about any of the comics or any stuff that I've shown you, or me being the next one too, um, feel free to put in the comment section. Comment section. In fact, let's have a look. See if anybody. Has put any comments up? <coughs> um, <coughs> Let me have a look. Uh, Curse, Curse Crusader. Um, yep, that was a fantastic deal on those Green Lantern figurines. Now, like I said, my butter one picked up a couple as well. He got the Kilgore, and he also got what I call the Disco. Hal Jordan Green Lantern because his suit's all sparkly and, and that looks a bit disco ish. Uh, what have we got there? Uh, Comic Crack says there are way too many variant covers for Adventure Time. Oh, there was loads. I've looked I've looked to see to pick up some issues of Adventure Time. There are literally there's a, at least three or four different comics for Adventure Time, but not only that each comic has got about five or six variant covers to it crazy <laughs> but yeah uh, regular show comic cracking again says regular show is okay not as good as Adventure Time uh, I've seen a few episodes or a few bits and pieces of episodes from Adventure Time and it does look really good and uh, like I said I've, I've heard 
of regular show. So I shall have a look, see if I can find any episodes of that on YouTube or clips of the episodes on YouTube. It does look interesting. So, uh, Curse Crusader, uh, LOL, you get my vote, Dr. M A W O W one Thank you very much. Yes, the more people that are bug the crap out of um, uh, Steve Moffat, BBC, BBC Wales, Cymru, um, anybody really at the BBC, it's just bombard them with hashtag M A W O O one for Doctor, and they'll be confused. And go, what the hell is this about? <coughs> oh, excuse me. Sorry. Um, a comic book mum says, uh, really sad about Matt Smith. I think I've seen that hashtag on Twitter as well. Yes, you probably have. Um, it's been going around a bit on Twitter, mainly in. Yeah, the, the comic book community and that. Um, but yeah, just pass it on. Why not? It'll be a laugh. See how far it gets. <laughs> um, and yeah, uh, personally, I I thought Matt Smith when he first started out. But then it's like most actors when they first start out with this sort of thing, it is a bit finding your feet. And it, I, I do really feel that this last half of the season that he's done, he really found his ground as Doctor Who. He really found the character. And it's just really sad that he's leaving at the Christmas episode. Uh, and and Colbert Mom says, says he did say he would, be, he would leave the Christmas episode. Um, and you would think there was someone lined up already too since they would probably be filming that for that episode soon. I think the Christmas episode, they start filming around about August time. If I remember correctly, with the way the, the scheduling for how they film for Doctor Who, uh, the Christmas episodes are usually filmed in the summer. And then, round about just after Christmas or just, just before Christmas, they'll film the new episodes for the next season. Uh, and I, I, I am sure that they've probably got an actor already lined up to play the Doctor, for the 12th Doctor. But if they haven't, um, as well as that, what harm is there going to be if um, they, they get bombarded with that hashtag? Uh, I think it'd be quite funny, actually. But yeah, you never know. Stranger things that happen at sea. So uh, there you go. That's the, the comment so far, and the viewers have just gone down again. Right, more comics. Uh, we have got. Revival, number 10. Another great series from Image Comics. And I just love this cover. It is so reminiscent of the old EC horror comics that you used to get in the, the 40s and 50s. Look at that. Look at that. Is that what I think it is? No, it's an intestine. It's an, uh, a large intestine just sat there as the, the Revival victim crawls across the floor. Brilliant. And a really good, really good series as well. <clears throat> From Marvel Comics, we have the Fearless Defenders number four AU, which ties into the Age of Ultron series event that's happening at the moment. And I, I have said this before. I feel that the tie-ins to Age of Ultron have been miles better absolutely miles better than the actual main series. I know that they've got more chance to pad out the characters and let people know what's actually happening in the you know, the, the Marvel Universe, the Ultron run Marvel Universe, but it, these, these AU titles have been really good as far as I'm concerned. I don't think I've actually read one that's been particularly really out and out bad. Uh, we've got, here we've got IDW's Judge Dread number seven, cover A, and I'm I'm enjoying these. I really do love them. If you're a 2000 AD fan, if you're a 2000 AD fan and a Judge Dread fan, you'll enjoy these. If you're thinking of starting to read or want to read Judge Dread comics, then I can't see any reason why these IDW comics wouldn't be on your list. Really, they are very close to 
the 2000 AD, what's happening in 2000 AD at the moment, the, the style and the way that they're written is very, very close to it. It's not like when DC Comics published the Judge Dredd and the Judge Dredd case file uh, series that they had in the 1990s, early 1990s, to coincide with the Judge Dredd movie, the Stallone Judge Dredd movie. It's not like those. They're not in a completely separate universe to the 2000 AD British Judge Dredd comics. This is, from what I can tell, firmly implanted inside the Judge Dredd universe that is in 2000 AD. <clears throat> Yeah, and some of the artwork. You know. uh, let me just check how a second. I just, want to ch I just want to check something on this. No, that's right. It wasn't who I was thinking of. Yeah, no, it wasn't who I was thinking of. I thought it was a, a specific artist in there, but it wasn't. But yeah, really good comic. <laughs> Dynamite number twenty. Seven from Dynamite, and this is Jennifer Blood, number twenty-seven. Again, it's one of those comics. It's just in my my grab bag at, at the uh, the comic shop for some reason. It's this is firmly at the bottom of my pile when I when I get my comics, and I just sort of flick for it. Really, there's nothing much. Nothing much that happens in this comic that makes me go, oh, wow, cool. Uh, I feel that maybe if Garfina's come back on it, he might be able to get back on track again. But, you know, I just get it because I know it's not, I, I reckon it's not going to be too long before it finishes. And as soon as I cancel it from my local comic shop, I reckon it's going to finish in any case. Uh, we've got from Image Comics again Legend of Luther Strode, number five. Of six, brilliant miniseries. I don't think it's. I don't think it's as good as the original series, the Strange Talents of Luther Strode, but it is still a really good read. Lots of action, lots and lots and lots and lots of violence. But um, yeah, definitely worth picking up. From Dynamite. Is this the last issue? I believe no, there might be one more issue then one more issue of this and I believe that's it for this one this is Dynamite's Peter Cannon Thunderbolt number 9 gorgeous Alex Ross cover there there you go it's, it's been one of those ones where it's been okay it's plodded along at its own pace, um, nothing really majorly outstanding about this, this comic. Uh, the artwork by uh, Jonathan Lau has been really nice, I have to say. But there's, it, it's, it's just been one of those ones that's plodded along, and it's been a, a nice, enjoyable read. But nothing that's made me go, "Oh wow!" sort of thing. It's just been one of those ones that you pick up and think, "Yeah, it's good." Oh, I am so looking forward to reading this. I'm so, so looking forward to reading this. Dark Horse Comics are doing a whole load of Edgar Allan Poe uh, adaptations, all written and all adapted by Richard Corbin. This is the this is issue one for the two parts miniseries of Edgar Allan Poe's. The Fall of the House of Usher by Richard Corbin. Oh, how much do I love Richard Corbin's artwork and body of work? It's just a brilliant, brilliant writer and brilliant artist. Really, really looking forward to this comic. Can't, cannot wait to read this comic. Oh, oh there it is. Just looking at the pictures inside, it, his his artwork, his artwork is um, it's grotesque, but not in a way that you look at it and go, oh, no, I can't look at that. It's 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 compellingly grotesque, shall we say? 
That's the only way I can really read it. Uh, only way I can really describe Richard Corbyn's artwork it is compellingly grotesque. Uh, da, 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 da. Is there a part here I can show you about being banned off of YouTube? Uh, probably. Yeah. If you've never seen Richard Corbyn's artwork before, there you go. Brilliant. <clears throat> Dynamite Comics again. Oh, I've got a load of Dynamite Comics actually. Uh, this is issue six and the final part of this series. And it is Garth Enos's Battlefields. This is part three of the fall and rise of Anna Kakova. If you don't know who this character is, Anna Kakova uh, originally appeared in. A, a mini series of Garfinus Battlefields mini series called the what's called the Sky Witches, and she is a a female Russian pilot in the Second World War, and this is her how the the female pilots were then treated after the end of the Second World War by the Russians by being locked up and saying no, you 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 know, how could you? We, we never had Russian Russian women flying our planes for us and, and fighting our battles. No, 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 no you're, you're mad. You're going to get sent to, sent to the gulag and then you'll never be seen again. Uh, but this is her, her becoming one of the first female jet fighter, Russian jet fighter pilots. A really nice story. Oh, we ain't got that many to go actually. So, a quick look at comments. What we've got here, comment wise. So, what you guys have been saying on here. <coughs> uh, comment, but mum, you agree uh, about, um, especially on the Cyberman episode, yeah. Yeah, I, I really do think it's it's really sad that Matt Smith is leaving Doctor Who at this time. I think if he'd done another season or so, maybe another two seasons, you would see his Doctor at the full potential that he could have done it. And I think it's really sad that he's leaving now. Um, but yeah, this, that's the thing with actors and this whole business that they call show. Um, yeah, they, they go where the money is and unfortunately... Doctor Who makes the name for the actors, and then once they get all the jobs come in to them, their agents turn around to them and say, I think it's time you left this show and went on to bigger things. I know Matt Smith has got a movie coming up where he's actually shaved his head. Uh, uh, there's, there's bits and pieces of pictures of it over the internet and that recently in, in, in newspapers in this, in this country of Matt Smith with a shaven head saying, Doctor Who shaves head, shock horror, you know, Main story on issue on page three. So, um, so yeah, whether that's got anything to do with it or not, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> and again, comic book mum says, love the revival series and those covers have been ama all been amazing. Yeah, Ev everything about revival has been just fantastic, a brilliant series. If you haven't picked it up yet, seriously, think about at least getting the trades. If if not, try and get the second or third printing of all the issues that have come beforehand. Uh, comic crack. Uh, you say that you really like the way they are dealing with the Age of Ultron tie-ins. Its own issue, numbered different, so it's not confusing, doesn't interfere with the regular series. Yep, I think that's a really good way of doing it as well. It's just, it's a, it's a, it's almost like a, an extra issue of that comic. The only thing I've got against these, these tie-in comics is the fact that they're $3.99. You'll be paying two ninety nine. say, well, the next comic I've got here um, is two ninety nine. The AU issue of this comic is three dollars ninety nine. I know they put a few extra pages in the comic and all that, but it is a little bit annoying to think that you have got to pay an extra one dollar for a comic that yeah you get the idea. It's it's a minor gripe really than anything else. But yeah, other than that, the the Age of Ultron tie-ins have just been brilliant, absolutely brilliant. <coughs> uh, comic Kraken again says. 
New Corbin stuff, very good, very cool. How many different stories is he doing? Uh, I know he's doing the two issue Fall of, the House, Fall of the House of Usher. He also did a one shot, which was. Oh, you're asking me now, aren't you? You really put him on the spot now. The one shot he did was. Um, Oh, the Ed Callum, Ed, Edgar Allan Poe story, the about the worms. <laughs> I know, I know. My mind's gone a complete blank. Maybe I'll have another drink. It might help. The Conquering Worm. That was it. See, alcohol. It helps. <laughs> um, yes, the the Edgar Allan Poe story, the, con the Conquering Worm. He done a one issue, one shot of that. And I'm trying to think, there's there's a part of my brain that is telling me that there was another one shot from Dark Horse that Richard Corbin done before the Conquering Worm. But I can't for the life of me remember what it was. I don't know if I dreamt it or, and I know he'd done a load of Edgar Allan Poe adaptations previously um, in the sort of like the eighties, and that was were published by companies like Eclipse or, or some such like that. Um, so I don't know if I'm getting those confused with what's been published by Dark Horse now, but I'm sure if you have a look on Dark Horse Comics or actually Google Richard Corbin and that, uh, you'll be able to find a, a complete list of all the Edgar Allan Poe stories he's adapted for comic books. Personally, Richard Corbin doing Edgar Allan Poe. Edgar Allan Poe is one of my favourite authors of all time, other than uh, H.P. Lovecraft and... Uh, various other, obviously various other, Neil Gaiman, Stephen King, uh, other, other authors like that. But Edgar Allan Poe is one of my favourite poets and authors of the time. Um, and to have Richard Corbin adapt his stories and his poems is just, oh, it's just uh, complete geekgasm, if you will. You know, <laughs> total and utter um, fanboy bliss for me, anyway. Um, Silver Age Nostalgia. Hi, how's it going, man? Hope you're well. Uh, as I hope everybody else out there as well is watching this now and later on. Uh, cool Iron Man shirt. I know, it is isn't it? pretty cool. Um, that was, it wasn't on the shirt when I bought it. I've been to a party, as I've said at the beginning of the video, and uh, this is what was given out. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I've now got... It doesn't stick to me, but... It sticks pretty well to older Iron Man here. So now I have Steampunk Iron Man t-shirt. So, <laughs> so there you go. So that's all the comments. Thank you guys. If you want to comment any more, feel free to do so. Um, and we'll just get back to the right screen. And uh, we'll get back to the comics. The last few comics that I've got here to show you. <clears throat> As I said, Beforehand, with the Ultra, Age of Ultron tie-ins, you've got a the AU titles. This is the Fearless Defenders issue four. This is part of the regular series, not the Age of Ultron tie-in series. And I love this cover. I don't know what it is about this cover, but I absolutely love it. Um, it's um, I don't know if you remember years and years ago. I think you probably still get them now. You used to get these um, these pieces of paper with pictures stuck on them, usually pictures of people, and then you would stick them onto bits of cardboard, cut the whole thing out, and then you could dress the people in cardboard clothing that you would have also stuck to bits of cardboard and cut out. And this is what's on the front cover of Phyllis Defenders number four. And it's the Valkyrie. Let's dress Valkyrie cover. And it's just it's just one of those it's just one of those covers that you look at it and you think it's a very simple cover. It's it's not really got much to do with the actual story inside, if anything. It's a very simple cover, but because of its simplicity, there is something about it. It's just like oh, I love it. I really do love this cover. Yeah. And the, the series as well has been really good. And I am really happy to see Marvel Comics give their female characters such um, a forward motion of 
stuff. Um, my words have failed me at the moment. Um, yeah, I mean, you've got X Factor, which uh, has got a lot of a, a, a mainly female centric group of characters in it. You've got Fearless Defenders, which has definitely got a female centric group of characters in there. You've also got the new X Men series that's come out, which is completely all female X Men. And I think it's brilliant. I think what Marvel Comics are doing, putting putting their female characters to the forefront of these comics and making them the stars and not making them the people who are just sat in the background making the tea or, you know, flying around and going, Oh, hello. So, you know, I think brilliant. More comics like this, please, Marvel. And more comics like this as well, DC, in fact any comic comic company where you've got female ma no, major female characters. More comics like it. Stay in my ear. It's terrible. Um, not many more to go. Not many more to go at all, actually. <clears throat> uh, if you remember seeing the Escalibur Brits video where Ghost Critic and myself uh, were <laughs> literally humbled by the presence of our guest. Um, Captain Strange Life. Uh, he 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 showed us a a comic from IDW called The Colonizer, and I was so taken by this comic that I I had to pick it up. Uh, I haven't seen issue three of this yet. I don't think it's out just yet of issue three, but I had to pick up the first two issues of this, and that's that one there. And in this one, you've got aliens that are scanning the Earth for life forms, taking samples of life, life forms and such, and then they go across a cemetery, and they scan the cemetery. But instead of taking samples or whatever it is they're doing, they actually reanimate the corpses of the dead bodies in the cemetery, causing zombies to appear and attack people in this little. Uh, Carbon Falls, this little town, Carbon Falls. That's the first issue of it. And that's the second. And it's been a real, real fun series to read. Uh, the, the aliens in there, even though they're supposed to be this higher intelligence um, of species from another planet, they are the dumbest aliens I think the dumbest aliens I think I've ever seen since the movie morons from space if you haven't seen the movie morons from space see if you can find the trailer for it you might even be able to find the full movie on YouTube somewhere but it is a funny that is a funny movie um, but yeah the colonized really good series from YDW last few comments to go now um, I actually said that this comic company reminds me of the EC Comics. It's the 21st century version of EC Comics. Uh, it's Avatar Comics. They always do really, really ultra-violent, gory stories. And this one is no different. Uh, it, from what I can tell, it's what would have happened if the Nazi Germany had superheroes or super-powered people uh, how would the war have been, have been won? How would the world look now? And it's uh, Kieran Gillen's Uber. This is number zero. This is Uber Enhanced. Number zero Enhanced. And this is the actual comic that was in number zero plus extra bits inside it because number zero of Uber sold out so quickly that... I think hardly anybody has got a copy of the original print of this. I would love to get an original printing of number zero of Uber. Um, I, I keep on looking on eBay. It goes for crazy money. But there's the... That's that cover there. And that's that's the regular cover. This is limited to 7,500 issues. Down there. And for I understand, this is the... This is the propaganda cover. Uh, there's, there's regular covers, wrap covers, 
enhanced covers, gory covers, I think, and propaganda covers. This is a propaganda cover for Uber number one. There you go. We're down to the last two comics now. We're down to the last two comics. Is there any? Is there any uh, any more comments here? Comet Kraken says Conqueror Worm. Yeah, that was the, the title I was thinking of. Thank you very much for that. Yep, the Richard Corbin comic. And the uh, the um, the Edgar Allan Poe comic. Yeah, really good. Really, really good. Uh, uh, Long Box Weekly Comic Book Review. Uh, hello, comic book family. I hope all is well with everybody. Yes, absolutely fantastic. Thank you very much for asking. Uh, I hope you're well too. Glad to see you here. Uh, Nearly finished, but if you want to, feel free to go back and have a look at this. It is bloody hell, three o'clock in the morning here, so uh, after I've done this, I'll probably go to bed. So, <laughs> and Scott Grady, hi man, how's it going? Uh, yes, hopefully this is the new Doctor Who you will be seeing. Chances are it won't be, but you never know. Stranger things have happened at sea. <laughs> so there you go. That's that's the comment so far. And these are the last two comics for me to show you. We have got the Phantom variant <clears throat> for Mark Miller and Frank Quitely's Jupiter's Legacy number one. That's Frank. That's a, the Frank Quitely cover, and. I don't know, there's just something about that cover. I think it's just the way she's nonchalantly just sat there blowing bubble gum and just like obviously chilling in some kind of club somewhere. I thought it was just a cool cover. And I I I, I know it's come out it came out last month, early last month from that, but I saw it. I, I had to phone up the comic shop and ask them to put it by for us. So I really enjoyed it. And it's the, the Phantom cover. Is that one? And finally a series from IDW that I am really enjoying reading. Uh, it's a 12 issue mini series to, to uh, celebrate the 50th anniversary of Doctor Who, and it is issue four of Doctor Who Prisoners of Time. And this is the Tom Baker fourth Doctor in this one. Really enjoying this series. If you're a Doctor Who fan, you will love this because it is really close to each each different Doctor's sort of style of story and that is encapsulated in each of these issues. And I really cannot wait to see how this pans out. Each issue highlights a different Doctor. And I think it, this ends at the end of this year. So it will end... It will, the end of this should coincide with... Matt Smith leaving Doctor Who at Christmas time, and um, yeah, I loving this series. Absolutely loving this series. I think they've just brought out the trade paperback, which reprints the first four issues of it. So yeah, brilliant. In fact, I I actually saw in Forbidden Planet today. They have actually got a replica of the Doctor Who, the fourth Doctor scarf. For sale in all made out of wool and knitted in exactly the same pattern as he had it in it. Now you can you can actually buy a replica of the Doctor Who, the fourth Doctor scarf in Forbidden Planet. I think it's about fifty quid though, so quite expensive, but yeah. Um I think that's that's it really, yeah. That's that's all I have to show you. Now, uh thank you everybody for watching. Uh the live show and uh, for everybody who will watch this pre-recorded. Uh, I've got to say thank you everybody as well who have subscribed to my channel. Absolutely brilliant. I think I'm up to about 366 subscribers now. So when we get to 400, I'll have to think of, or when we get close to 400, I'll have to think of something special to do for you guys for basically putting up with me <laughs> and watching my, my channel, watching my videos that I put up. Um, well, it? If you've got any, if you're watching this and this the recorded one, if you've got any comments, 
and uh, about any of the comics or anything in this video then feel free to comment down in the comment section comment section down below uh, if this is the first video you've seen from my channel hello how are you you right fantastic um, please feel free to subscribe mm, here I don't know on this screen everything's reversed I think it's about here it might be here I know it's not up here it's definitely not there so I think it's around about here sort of area hit the subscribe button subscribe to my channel make, get it closer to 400 subscribers that'd be brilliant and um, yeah if you like this video feel free to thumbs it up be brilliant and as I say at the end of all of my videos if you don't like the video if you for whatever reason you absolutely detest this video feel free to thumbs it down I don't mind I really don't mind at all if you want to thumbs it down you can do. but if you do thumbs it down say why you thumbs it down just be courteous. See, I thumbs it down because, yeah. <coughs> so, yes, I shall leave you all now. Um, thanks again to everybody, as I said, who's been watching this as it's been going out live on Google Hangout. Um, <coughs> I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need to say before I go. No, not really. Apart from have fun enjoy yourselves enjoy the comics that you read and that's basically it really thanks for watching take care and ta-ta for now